Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this time a short video on how to adapt an A500 keyboard to an A4000. Uh, you can see the uh, adapter I made here previously. Let me just pull it off. So you can see I had a piece of pin header there and a piece of uh, matrix board, you know, Vero strip board. I indicated the ground pin there with a, a stripe just so that I couldn't uh, mix it up uh, and it goes to a five pin DIN. So if I want to connect an A500 keyboard I can just uh, take the uh, connector here, green is ground, that's the way I remember that, and uh, plug it on there, and that will plug into any of my A2000 boards here, and that works fine. I'll post a link to that video up there, it was a repair uh, series actually of the A2000 boards. So what I want to do next is adapt this further so that I can connect this, I think, ultimately to the A4000. Now the A4000 uses a 6 pin mini DIN as you can see here. So what I've done is I bought a uh, cable that's got uh, you know, it's a straight pass through like this, I think it was like a metre or two in length. And I've cut it into two lengths, actually it must be two metres because that's well over a metre, about the length there. And you can see that it's quite long, the cable, it's very long in fact. So I haven't cut that in two, I can use the other half to do something else later. And the reason why I'm going from that connector to this connector is I've got a shell coming for uh, a keyboard like this so the shell it'll have a proper housing yeah for my A2000 so when I want to use the keyboard with the A4000 I'll be adapting from that to uh, which and I've got the female here as you can see so with this adapter here I can literally just uh, plug that in there like that uh, and I just need to wire this up now like this I just need to work out which colours go to which pins here. So I'll test that on the connectivity test on the multimeter next. Write the colours down and the pin numbers. You know, the little diagram so I can make sure I know which colours are which uh, pins. And then looking at the uh, pinouts for the A500 keyboard and the A4000 keyboard, I need to work out which pins here map to which pins here. So I'm adding this bit in just in case you've never done anything like this yourself. I'll just show you here, I'll just extend this a little bit further. If you just snip very carefully, try and scratch the cable covering all the way around. Don't dig too deep, otherwise you'll cut through the wires inside. But if you do that, and just grab it, hang on, and then just grab it and pull. You can see the sleeving's come off there, and then you've got typically uh, a braid around the outside. This has got like a separate uh, shield look, it's just like a bit of foil. And there's a uh, bit of wire there, can you see that? That's like the ground, so you could sort of just twist that around there like that. And then we've got our individual wires there. Bear in mind this is six pins, so there's going to be six different coloured wires, and that's exactly what we've got. Hope you can see that. Uh, so it's the same sort of thing with these, and I'll just show you on one of them. Let's do the red. So very, very carefully score because it's a very fine wire that you'll trim the end off if you're not careful, and then just pull away like that. You can see you've got some wire exposed. Twist that uh, like that to keep the strands together. And this is the reason I bought a wire like this because it's already wired. Trying to wire six connections onto a DIN like this, although we don't need six, you could just get away with four actually. But nevertheless. Wiring six connections on there is really fiddly on a connector like that. But so if you buy an adapter like I got here and then just chop it in two, half of your work, the hard bit, is already done for you. Um, so if we just measure from that red there, this is the difficult bit. On continuity tests, you know, so if these probes touch, the meter will beep. So we just need to work out where red is. So it's just a case of just carefully probing each, that's that one there, third one up. Yeah, each of the connections and then just write them down on a diagram. You know, draw your alignment of your pins there on your diagram with a little uh, pin there, that plastic thing at the bottom. Uh, and then just, let's say, write down which pin is which colour. So that's the red one done. So I've listed down some of the uh, pinouts here for the A2000 uh, keyboard. I'll show you in a sec. I've uh, compared to my previous video there just to work out which pins go where. I've also got the pinout from the uh, A4000 connector, and I've written that down, but that's the female connector, so all I need to do is if I just tin these up, I'll show you in a minute, 
and then it's just a case of working out to join which pin to which uh, pin you know which wire to which wire because the colors are going to vary you know it's like yellow on here might join to orange on the uh, 2000 adapter I've got anyway we'll just tin these up it just makes it easier for measuring because then you don't get the strands of wire floating outwards but also we need to do this anyway before we uh, solder onto the connector right so what I've got here is the male pin out so this is the actual keyboard connector the 2000 it goes as you see there yeah that's the male uh, and I did that from the female so I got a diagram that showed the female and I just flipped them around so you got pin 1, pin 4, pin 2, pin 5, pin 3 and on my cable because I've already got a cable here for, for my, you know A500 keyboard I just worked out which colored wires on the A500 keyboard um, correspond with those so I've got like black is the clock keyboard clock uh, ground is green uh, K dats that's the data is uh, brown and orange is 5 volts and that's these wires here so uh, as I say that's the mapping between those color of those wires on the board and the uh, male and the male connector here so then the second part of this I did the opposite so this is the uh, female part that sits on the actual A4000 motherboard uh, and I numbered the pins up here one two three four five six etc and listed the things here so you've got data not connected to ground plus five clock not connected now if you're gonna do something like this for the a4000 I think on the unused not connected pins here you've got serial RX and TX so you could have a, a fly lead coming off a cable like this to give you that serial port and there might be some I add at a later date I'm not in a rush to do it just now so contrary to the, the, the A2000 uh, the 5 pin didn't being male there this is the female of the motherboard so all I did here is on my cable is I flipped it as I measured it so what I mean is like that first pin there pin 5 it's not going to be the right hand pin it's going to be the left hand pin because this is going to go into that socket does that make sense continuity measured each of the pins there to where they go here and labeled them up here so uh, as I say you know a pin 5 that appears on the, the right hand side of there it's actually the left hand side here because it goes in that way does that make sense so when I look at the two tables now I know I need to get the data pin 1 and pin 1 here is pink so the pink wire from uh, this cable here needs to go to the data pin on here which is that one KDAT which is brown so it's pin 2 and if I just do that for each of the uh, colours there, we uh, should be done. Now I've turned all those up as part of the measure measuring process there. Uh, the only other thing I need to do is slide the housing over here in advance, because I'll forget to do that, I always do. That's it. And all I need to do now is, uh, is join them up. Like I say, matching this table here to work out the pin and the colour to the connection here and uh, ignoring the call the call is really just for me to test this later the main thing is I know where the you know let's like say the data pin is the ground pin is the clock pin is and the five volts so it's just matching them up here dead easy so I'll try and show you one or two of these putting the pink wire through the actual eyelet there and there's a little uh, hole you know where to you want to solder it on and then if I just add a bit of a uh, solder containing flux at the same time there you go got a nice join there and the pink, uh, hopefully, as you can see, is now reliably joined to that pin. So that's the uh, data pin. So I'll show you the next one, then we'll just jump to it being completed, I think, or certainly putting the uh, housing back on. So the next one, pin 2, is not connected, ignore that. Pin 3 is ground, so pin 3, ground is orange. So we want to join our orange wire to pin 4 here which is uh, green actually on the A500 side, but ignore the green, colour's not important at this point here, it's just the fact we need to put the uh, orange to uh, pin 4. So because this is the uh, male pin out here, and this is a uh, female, if I look at the back of it, that corresponds with the same uh, pattern here, so our ground uh, pin 4 is the second one here. So again, I will just try and uh, get this to go through the little uh, eyelet, can it's easier said than uh, done yeah there we go like that and solder that on there we go so that's uh, data and ground done so far 
just two more connections to go. The other thing I'll join up with that ground is the shield. So what I mean by the shield is on here, uh, you can see here, there's a, wire, you know, a series of strands of wire that are twisted around each other that have not got uh, any encapsulation. Those connect to this uh, blue bit of shield here, you know, so there's some shield around this whole cable. So that also needs to go to the ground. So I'll do that now before I forget. We'll solder that onto the orange as well. I'll just, uh, you know, bend it upwards a little bit and uh, just solder it on the top there. So that has literally taken uh, about two minutes. There's, there's hardly anything to do. It's like four wires. Um, so these two wires here are not used. Now I could uh, just trim those off, but as I say, what I might do is adapt this at some point so those can be tapped off to have a serial fly lead coming off this. So for the moment, I'll just get a little bit of uh, insulation tape, I think, and just uh, wrap around those. So I mean, you could use a bit of heat shrink or something, but this will uh, do the job. We just want them to remain isolated. Uh, you could argue that I didn't need to, you know, I could cut them off completely, I could trim them down. Now this bit is going to be internal to the uh, the thing here, so let's uh, let's just wrap it around the shield there, and then what we'll do is I'll pull the black in like that, and wrap it around. And then I'll fold the red down, and just get another small piece of tape over the red. It just means that at some point, let's say, I can add a serial connection to this really easy for the uh, CD32. So we just need to get these uh, metal bits on. This is going to be uh, fun. And as I say, make sure you put that bit on first, because uh, otherwise you'll have to undo all your wiring again. And I think this kind of hangs out, doesn't it? So if we just uh, get this here. Yeah, that little metal strip there goes along that gap. You can see the little uh, inserts that were indents there that hold that in place. It's just the right length because you can see the cable relief is going to hold that quite nicely there. So let's uh, just tighten the cable relief up. I don't like this kind of cable relief to be honest. Because you kind of have to squish it at different angles like that in order to get it to uh, grip properly as you can see yeah there we go that's nice and uh, firm there so it's not going to come out of place and then I think that goes there like that yeah and then our housing just goes over the whole lot here look does it go all the way up? I think it does actually. Yeah, it goes there like that. And that should be it. So we can test that there now. There we go, that's fine. Let's go and give it a try. So the first test, having powered it on, is to test the caps lock. Can you see that? It's coming on and uh, going off. So that shows that certainly the power and everything is correct there. We just now need to see whether it's actually passing the data and the clock signals properly. So let me get a shell up, that's probably the easiest way. I'll put a keyboard test program up, up in a minute. So if I try typing, let's do avail, there we go. Sweet! And now I have a keyboard for my A4000. So one of the obvious things to point out here, because the LED signal is not coming across and the floppy drive light, these aren't in use. The other thing is, if you did control Amiga Amiga, it won't work, it won't do a reset. It's the same issue I had with the A2000 there. I think I don't know whether this works on the A2000 as well, it may do. You need to remove Q1, I think. I'm not sure if anything else on there needs removing that way. Now, when I come to fit this inside a shell, as you'll see in a later video, it's obviously then going to be permanently inside that shell. This, well, not this keyboard, maybe the other one. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. Um, and at that point, what I could do is feed 5 volts, maybe through a resistor, there are some resistors on here, through to the power LED. Um, the second LED is not going to be used, but I think there are spaces on that keyboard for those two LEDs. You could find an alternative use for the uh, floppy LED there. You could in theory just use them both as power lights though, I don't know. So I'll just do the keyboard test in to check here. I'll just uh, drag my finger along the uh, keys like that. This incidentally is a keyboard I fixed in the previous video you saw there. 
where it had a 40 keyboard MCU. Sweet, that's working fine. So yeah, a nice easy way to get a keyboard on an A4000. As I mentioned earlier, the benefit of buying a cable like this means you you know you cut it in two. You've got enough to make two adapters. It's, uh, it's long enough here to have quite a long second adapter. You know, so it's just like a six-pin mini din, six-pin mini din straight through. So there's our final uh, adapter there. It would have been better with the grey uh, housing. I've probably got one somewhere. Uh, and we've got the one I covered in a previous video here with a little line. So, you know, I can connect an A500 here to an A2000. I could then connect that same keyboard to here. But as you'll see in the next video, I've got a, uh, a custom keyboard that I built myself that has just got the right connector. It's an A2000 connector, so I can just plug it into there and use it with my A4000 or CD32. And as you say, I can always revisit this, and uh, I don't know which side it is, this side here, pull uh, a couple of uh, wires out there to a serial connector. And on the CD32, you then got a serial port. But the stuff I've shown you in general within these few videos talking about the keyboard stuff here, hopefully you've gathered by now, you've just generally got power, ground, data and clock. Those are the four things you need for any of the Amigas. An A1000, an A2000, an A3000, a 4000, CD32, an A500, an A600, uh, 1200, did I mention that? Etc. The the common in the way they work. The difference is on the reset. I told you there that you could remove that transistor to uh, deal with the reset issue. You'll see that in the next video. Um, and the other issue is obviously is the floppy and power LED. Again, you'll see some uh, ways or uses for those in the next video as well. But in general, if you just get the pinouts for the, the, the system you're looking at, you can use the information I've shown you in this video, and it's very easy to adapt from one Amiga keyboard to another system. I've seen people fit A500 keyboards in an Amiga 1200, which may sound crazy until you consider the whole issue with membranes and things. And actually, an A500 keyboard will fit in there okay. It's just making sure you get those four connections. Uh, and obviously, deal with your LEDs. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. Thanks to my patrons for helping keeping the channel going. If you'd like to support the channel, please see the coffee and Patreon links down below. I'll catch you in the next video.